rocks. Hello my friends, I hope you are well. Today I'm here to talk about Zelda, but alas, this isn't a celebratory reaction or a classic retrospective or a three and a half hour long review, but a close look at the controversy surrounding the art style of the upcoming Link's Awakening remake. That's right, the internet is currently split down the middle. The Zelda community is up in arms. Twitter is alight with savage feuds. Physical fights have broken out. Okay, uh, literally none of that is true. But I am seeing a lot of arguments about it, and it all fascinates the heck out of me. It brings up all sorts of questions about what Zelda games should look what way. Perhaps more interestingly though, it calls into question the nature of opinions in the world of video games, which we almost unanimously deem an artistic medium. So let's dig into this whole thing and answer some questions. Is this Wind Waker all over again? Are people hating on the art style simply because it's different? Is it okay to dislike how the game looks? Let's find out. Only slightly, no, and yes. There, we found out. Video over. Okay, no, I guess we should go a little bit deeper than that. I've got some opinions about the art style and some reasons why someone might not find it ideal, but first let's touch on the whole opinion thing, which is what spurred this video in the first place. This is one of those topics that I've wanted to talk about for years now, so it's nice to finally be given an opportunity in the context of, you know, Nintendo and the Switch and all that. I have a pet peeve when it comes to opinions, and it's extra aggravating because I feel like this should be obvious. This is a conclusion that I feel like everyone should eventually come to, but for whatever reason, it's not. There's a way to keep a conversation slash debate respectful and prevent it from turning into an argument, and it's this. When you disagree with someone, state your opposing opinion instead of attacking theirs. You know that comic, that shh, just let people enjoy things one? Well, that goes for the opposite too. People are allowed to dislike something you like, and you're very much allowed to disagree with all their opinions. But when instead of saying, you feel that way, well, I feel this way, you say, you only feel that way because you such and such, you have officially and irreparably broken the conversation. You've turned it into an argument. You've made it personal. There's that whole dumb thing that, oh, you have freedom of speech to state your opinion. Well, I've got freedom of speech to criticize that opinion. Oh, well, then I've got freedom of speech to criticize your opinion of that person's opinion, and it's this never-ending thing. And that never-ending garbagey thing begins with that first criticism of that first opinion. That whole thing doesn't start if instead of a criticism or a boros, you just have two independent opinions sitting next to each other. Elaboration, back and forth, continued discussion, that's all great. But that can't happen if you start that chain going. And sorry, if you do that, even if you think another person's opinion is closed-minded or whatever, you have made your Yourself, the closed-minded one. Even if you're like 99% sure that other person's opinion was made for what you feel is a bad reason, it is still not your place to call yourself a mind reader and assume that you're right and to call them out for it, especially when you're talking about literally every single person that shares that opinion. If I might indulge in a little preachiness here, like I haven't been already, you are not the thought police, and you most certainly cannot pretend that you are certain that every single one of those people is wrong and their opinion is unfair and dumb. The only thing that's unfair here is using such silly generalizations. There are a lot of different reasons for a person to have any given opinion, so it's kind of ridiculous to try to invalidate that person by saying their opinion is wrong instead of just saying that you have an opinion that is different. I'm really not trying to call anybody out here, and I know lots of people just kind of say stuff <laughs> without putting too much weight on it, but I gotta be honest with you. I firmly believe it is a mark of immaturity to attack and try to invalidate a person's opinion in Instead of just saying why you disagree and admitting that different people just plain have different opinions is a very immature attitude. And I really hope no one thinks I'm trying to stir anything up here, but it can also kind of make a person look insecure. To simply state your opinion is to be confident in your opinion. To be so uncomfortable with opposing opinions that you have to come up with reasons why they're actually wrong? Not really the mark of a confident person. Say you build your house in the hills and your neighbor builds their house in the trees. A confident person simply says, I prefer living in the hills. A confident person does not then go to their neighbor's house in the trees and try to tear it down. I say all this because of a lot of the debate surrounding the Link's Awakening remake that I've been seeing, on Twitter especially. I've seen plenty of people respectfully stating their opinions that they don't like the art style. 
But you know what's been at the forefront? The tweets that get all the likes and the retweets and are all over my timeline? Ones that are like, the people who don't like Link's Awakening's art style are blah blah blah. Anyone who doesn't like how this looks was probably blah blah blah. Again, not naming names here, and I adore most of the people that made those tweets. That's, that's why I follow them in the first place, not trying to call them out. Just saying I take slight issue with that way of putting forth an opinion or rather invalidating a different opinion. A lot of people are saying this is the Wind Waker situation all over again, and I can agree slightly, but I do think there are a lot of differences. When Nintendo first revealed Wind Waker, I was one of the many people who were put off by the cartoony new art style. As more trailers came out, I got over my apprehensions though, and of course went on to love the absolute spaghetti sauce out of the game, as many others did as well. Especially as it's aged, people have come to really appreciate these simple yet fun, colorful and uniquely beautiful visuals. And when you think about it, as an evolution of the previously realistic 3D Zeldas, it's kind of jarring, but as an evolution of the original Zeldas, it makes perfect sense. If Wind Waker were the very first 3D Zelda, I think the initial reception would have been much more positive. Context is very important with these things. It's technically possible that some people dislike Link's Awakening's art style now, but will end up coming around and absolutely loving it. In that way, it is a little similar to the Wind Waker thing. You've got an upcoming Zelda game with a pretty distinct and very colorful, almost cutesy visual style, and some people don't like it. But I do feel like the two situations differ by quite a lot, and the big reason is, again, context. When Wind Waker was revealed, 3D console gaming was still relatively young. Most of us had spent years playing games with 2D sprites, and those older games were most often cartoony because cartoony characters just looked better when rendered in pixels on small screens. It was a better choice for the tech that was available. When 3D gaming became a thing, and games like Zelda were able to be more realistic, we saw that as a natural progression of the medium. Developers were finally able to depict their characters in the ways they envisioned, rather than with simplistic little pixely blobs. Mario ate mushrooms and jumped on turtles, so it made sense that his first 3D game was cartoony, and that he remained cartoony after that. But when Ocarina of Time came out, it was like, yeah, this makes sense. <laughs> this is right for Zelda. It's a more mature series. You're killing monsters with a sword. You're solving puzzles. There's a little more to it. Then Majora Majora's Mask, with its even darker tones, seemed to solidify the idea that as graphical capabilities improved, Zelda would naturally become more realistic, and by extension, awesome looking. That was why the Wind Waker reveal was so jarring. At the time, it was hard to see it as a group of artists simply making art the way they wanted to make it. All the Zelda guys had all sorts of reasons for going with that style, but to a lot of us, it felt like a step backward. We didn't understand why they would want to make Zelda look like a cartoon. We couldn't see how such a style could fit the series, even though we soon learned it most certainly could. But the Link's Awakening remake is coming at a very different time in gaming history. We are absolutely used to colorful, cartoony visuals in our Zelda games, and in fact, our games in general. It's no longer a new concept that scares us. Every single quote-unquote 2D Zelda has been colorful and cartoony, and everyone seems to be fine with that. No one was looking for gritty, realistic graphics in Link Between Worlds, despite the fact that we all knew the 3DS was capable of such a thing. Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask were on the system, yet when a new 2D Zelda came along, nobody seemed to mind that it looked the way it did. And look at the rest of the gaming landscape too. The whole graphics race back in gens 5 and 6 where the best games were the ones that looked the most realistic, that's not as much of a thing anymore. Especially if you're into indie games, you're probably playing games with a lot of different styles, many of which are cartoony and fun. Heck, some of the most popular shooters in the world right now are basically cartoons. Gritty realism is less important now than it's been in ages. We are more open to different artistic styles than we have been in ages. So to say that people dislike Link's Awakening's look because it's colorful or whatever is simply wrong. People aren't going, what? A simple colorful 2D Zelda game? Unheard of. No, like I said, there are specific and, in my opinion, reasonable reasons to dislike it that extend far beyond the simple, it's something different and people don't like things that are different, which has been somewhat true at some points in history. Sometimes drastic change can scare people, but it's also just a lazy argument, and it completely dismisses all legitimate criticism as people just being neophobic. To always play the people just hate new things card is to suggest that new things are literally immune to criticism and no one's allowed to dislike them, which is just ridiculous. And moving forward, just so you're not left guessing, I am not saying that I hate the style, though I will say I'm skeptical that it was the best 
best choice for the reasons I'm about to go over. I think the game looks really nice in its own way, and I will very much enjoy it, but I just feel like I might have enjoyed the style a little more if they'd gone with something different. So I'm kind of on the fence, and I very much understand where the criticism is coming from. Let's get right to it though. I think you can probably boil all this disagreement down to one aspect of the game's style. It's not that it looks colorful or cartoony, but that it looks like it's made out of toys. A lot of the objects have this plasticky sheen, and there's a depth of field effect that elicits the feel of macro photography. Octopath Traveler is another recent game that used this effect heavily to make the world look like a little paper diagram or something. Now the depth of field thing I'm all right with. A lot of people seem to be pretty annoyed by it, but I think it's a nice little effect. My problem is with the whole plastic thing. Other Nintendo games have employed this effect and I've never been a huge fan of it. It looks attractive in a certain raw horsepower sort of way, but it doesn't actually make a lot of sense for skin or cloth or whatever to look like plastic unless it's actually supposed to be. Link's Awakening looks much more like it's going for the whole plastic toy effect than most other games, especially when combined with the depth of field thing and I've got a number of problems with this. One problem is that the whole made of real material thing is approaching really overdone territory. As far as I can see, it started with Kirby's epic yarn, but then within just the last few years, Kirby also went full on clay, Paper Mario perfected the realistic paper craft aesthetic, Yoshi had a whole game made of yarn, and now he's basically getting the color splash treatment mixed with a whole bunch of crafts made from real world stuff. In my opinion, the novelty is wearing thin. Plus, I think those styles fit the likes of Kirby and Yoshi and even Mario better than they do Zelda. Zelda isn't generally super serious or anything, but I think there's a depth of adventure and creativity there that just doesn't really fit with the whole everything's made of real stuff theme. In my eyes, Zelda games really do take place in some other universe, and I don't want them even touching the real world beyond small, innocuous references and gags. Kirby, Yoshi, and Mario have always had this kind of winking, self-referential thing going on, and that's great, that's great for them. I just don't think that fits Zelda. Similarly, I'm not sure if the style fits the tone of this specific game. Link's Awakening is a light-hearted game, but I've always felt like it has something of a surreal and, uh, well, dreamlike quality. I can see how the toy angle is their way of tackling the dreamlike tone. It sort of sets it apart from other Zeldas. It makes it feel a little more imaginary, a little more like a story. It makes sense on paper, and I can see the reasoning, but I just feel like it's too simple and disarming. It feels like it removes some of that true surrealism and turns it into just another silly kids playing with toys and crafts Kirby Yoshi Paper Mario game. Toys are certainly fun, but there's nothing surreal and mysterious about a toy. Another problem is that, at least based on what I can see in the trailer, Link's Awakening does the whole toy thing, but it still doesn't quite go all the way with it, making its design look kind of unfocused. I know I already said I'm not sure if the toy thing was the right choice, so I should be happy that it's not all toy, but this halfway point is weird in its own special way. All the trees look like they came out of plastic molds. These vines look like Lego blocks or something, but then lots of other stuff kind of just looks like stuff video game stuff, not toys or anything. At least the other games I've mentioned went all out with their ideas. And even if I'm not completely sold on the toy concept, there's a chance that going all out would have at least given the game a stronger identity of its own. It might've felt a little less awkward and in between. I think one big issue that I have is the wasted potential. As you might've seen in my Pokemon Let's Go review, I'm not a big fan of square for square remakes of decades old games. I need not remind you that this is just personal preference, just like all of this is, I know plenty of people want exactly this. This is what a perfect remake is for them. But personally, I see no reason why the developers couldn't have given themselves a little more wiggle room when designing the game, or at least like the overworld. The Switch is capable of such beautiful graphics. Nintendo's artists are capable of such gorgeous designs. So why does the grass have to come in perfect squares? To return to these vines again, why do they have to be made of these perfect little repeating Lego blocks? They could have accomplished all the same stuff designed wise and made a perfectly faithful remake while still making it feel more organic. Not realistic, just real within the world. More detailed, more artful. And to swing back around to the cartooniness thing, again, cartooniness isn't a problem. Simplicity is a problem. This game has so much potential to take the original and build it into something beautiful. Something that the original developers might have made if they had the hardware power to do it. But this square by square toy style limits it. It brings everything down to a simple toy-like 3D representation of the original sprites. Instead of letting 
letting it be as artistically interesting as it wants. From what we can see, it looks like instead of saying, how can we make this look better? They said, how can we make this look just like the original, but in 3D? Like I said, I do still think it looks very pretty in its own way, but I also feel like it could be so much more while still completely embodying the tone and spirit and even the precise design of the original. And none of this is helped by that opening cinematic. <laughs> it is so, so gorgeous. It really sets up expectations that the actual gameplay can't quite meet. That intro truly does represent the magic of the original game. I can imagine using this beautiful painterly style that really does the tone justice and turns the world into a work of art. And I know this video is absolutely packed with agains and like I said, but again, like I said, I get what they were going for. As many people have pointed out, the intro is a direct remake of the original intro. Then, kind of separately, the main game is a direct remake of the original main game. If that original sprite link were converted to 3D, this is what he would probably look like. The style is absolutely accurate. But remember when everyone was crazy about Watchmen? And then the Watchmen movie came out, and besides a detail in the ending, the vast majority of the movie was like shot by shot constructed directly from panels in the original graphic novel, and that didn't make it a good movie? <laughs> like at all? Or how about when Stephen King didn't like Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of The Shining because, despite being a vastly superior piece of fiction in every possible way, don't at me, it wasn't accurate enough? So then he wrote his own screenplay, which they made into the most perfectly accurate TV movie miniseries based on a book ever, and it was like the worst movie. <laughs> Watching that movie was like spilling coffee on yourself and having to sit in it for four hours. It was miserable. I'm not saying Link's Awakening will turn out like Watchmen or the Shining TV movie. I, I wouldn't even make a joke about that. <laughs> That's going too far. I'm just saying that accuracy shouldn't always be the end goal of a remake. I think capturing the spirit of the original and expanding on it, overall improvement should be the goal. And not necessarily expansion in terms of gameplay. I'm perfectly fine with the gameplay remaining mostly the same, which is why at that final Fantasy 7 remake ever comes out, which it probably won't, I'm staying away from it because it sounds like they're reimagining it into a new game entirely. There are some cases where revamping the gameplay and adding a lot of stuff is a good idea, like with Samus Returns, but it depends on each individual case and now I'm getting too deep into something that is not the point. The point is that at least in this specific case, I am happy with the gameplay being basically the same, but I feel like the art style could be so much more, whether it's with painterly visuals or simply with more detailed artistic yet still completely colorful and cartoony and fun 3D graphics. Just not factory-made plastic trees and copy-pasted plant models and shiny sheens that make some things look like plastic, even though they're not plastic, or they are, but this other stuff isn't plastic, I don't really know. And there's one last thing I've got to say about opinions and art styles and stuff, because I don't know when it'll come up again. Even if you think it is wrong to dislike this art style, even if you think people have the wrong reasons for disliking it, or if you think it's wrong for a person to not play the game because they don't like the art style, it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's opinions, dude. People can dislike anything for any reason they want. There was once a time when I thought that all the other teenagers around me who were skipping out on Wind Waker because of the style were so ignorant and wrong, but now I know it didn't matter. They were perfectly within their right. Something too many people don't seem to understand is that not only do different people enjoy different things, but sometimes they enjoy the same things for different reasons. There could be a person who enjoys games purely based on how good their music is. That person is not wrong. Same with voice acting or character models or color, or yes, even graphics. A lot of people seem to think that playing games based purely on graphics is the mark of the stupidest person ever. A person who doesn't even like or understand games, but it's not. They're just liking what they like. You could have a person who just loves rocks. <laughs> <laughs> How good do the rocks look? How many rocks are there? Can you pick up the rocks? These are the metrics by which they judge the quality of a game. How much fun they have with it is based purely on rocks. That, that is very different from how I measure games. I just don't have the same tastes as that person, and their standards even seem a little silly to me. But it doesn't matter. More power to them. Let them enjoy their rock games. And you can't tell them that they're wrong or they're playing games for the wrong reasons. You don't know them. You're not in their head. You just don't have the same tastes and priorities is them. And I know that to some people, graphics and art style are fine, but they are secondary to good gameplay. Superfluous even. 
But video games are a visual medium. If someone doesn't want to play a game because they don't like how it looks, you cannot convince me that that's unreasonable. I know I've turned down games because I didn't like how they looked. I don't want to stare at something that I think is ugly for 10 to 20 hours. I've disliked how a game looked, then didn't end up coming around five years later, as some people seem to insist will happen with Link's Awakening. I still think Skyward Sword is one of the ugliest Zelda games. Not because it's different or because it's colorful, but because I don't think it looks very good good. To hammer it home, you've just got to remember that you're not the thought police. It is not your job to make sure everyone is right like you are. It's not your job to make sure that everyone plays every single game that they might end up enjoying because to not play those games would be an injustice. Who cares, man? <laughs> you ever hear the phrase, you do you? Because it's something of a mantra that I've been living by in recent years. And if you haven't clicked away already, here's, here's a really big one that I see literally every day, very often in comments aimed at me. And please pay attention here because this is really important. An opinion doesn't become a complaint just because you disagree with it. Like, it's funny how someone can say how much they like something and everyone nods their heads and thinks it's great, but then that person criticizes something and suddenly you get people going, stop complaining, stop whining. Yeah, it's not whining just because you feel differently. If it's done respectfully, it's just expressing an opinion, like any opinion. And I know this is just based on my personal experience with this whole Link's Awakening thing, but I've seen like no one quote unquote complaining about the art style. I see people expressing their opinions. I'm looking at a piece of art and I don't like what I see. Sometimes even, I don't like it and here's why. The ones who are doing what could be described as complaining are the ones telling people that it's wrong to dislike the art style. The people going, they're all wrong, this is Wind Waker all over again, in five years they'll love it. That's complaining. It's complaining when you try to make the world fit your point of view by getting in people's faces about how you think it should be. And before you say it, before you say it, I think there's a big difference between aiming criticism at a company or a piece of art and talking about how you think it would be better if it were different and going out of your way to tell people how you think they should be different. That's really at the core of all this. Have all the opinions you want, say them all you want, but once you try to force an opinion on someone else or you assume that a different opinion must have been made in error, you've crossed the line. If someone is spreading misinformation, feel free to inform them. If someone is harassing the people around them, feel free to call that person out. Interjection and confrontation have their places. But if someone expresses a personal opinion about a piece of media, tell them how you disagree. Offer your own opinion as a means of discussion, but let them have their opinion. Be mature, be confident in your own opinion. Discuss, don't argue. And most importantly of all, remember that I'm gonna be at Midwest Gaming Classic in Wisconsin in April, Too Many Games in Philadelphia in June, and Portland Retro Gaming Expo in Portland in October. Some of the info is still updating as the year goes on, but check each website for details, follow me on Twitter for updates as well, and be sure to give me a hoogie spooky down in the comments if you're coming to any of these events. Really, at the end of the day, all this Link's Awakening remake business brings up one idea that's truly important, that we should truly walk away with. Hashtag remake The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages and The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons for the Nintendo Switch. Also, hashtag remake Minish Cap 2, but not until I make a whole video talking about how I think they should do the art style first because it's really important and I want to make sure they do it right. Also, hashtag where is Pikmin 4. Also, hashtag wood smells.